Hey CPA candidates, it's Matt from Universal CPA Review. Thanks for coming to check out our video on a simulation that tests your knowledge on whether you know how to convert a static budget to a flexible budget. Now the video you're about to watch, this is just the explanation video from the Universal platform. While it can be watched on a standalone basis, I encourage you to come use the platform. You'll be given a variety of information as well as four exhibits, right? We all know the exam loves to add exhibits to simulations. So this is a great one to see where to look for information that you might need. So before we dive into the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need to grow our subscriber count so we can continue to add these videos for you. If you're studying for the exam, join our Facebook groups, right? The students love them. We get involved. We'll help answer questions. It's a great community. The link is in the description. And then also, if you haven't tried our trial yet, please come do so. It's a free 14-day trial. You'll have full access, and you'll really get to see what the Universal Platform is all about. Now, when it comes to promotions, please reach out to us. We're happy to work with you. If you have previously bought another course and it's just not working out, we do have the Spilt Milk program, so ask us about that. Now let's dive into the video. So in this simulation, we have Miami Beach Properties. Now they prepared a static budget for May of year four, and then Shelly, the CFO, wants to create a flexible budget for that same period. So we have the static budget figures and we need to go to a flexible budget. Now, what is the difference between these two types of budgets, right? Because they're both budgets, but what is the real difference? So the real difference is that the static budget is going to be based on estimated volume or units sold. However, the flexible budget, it will be updated for actual volume or units sold in that period. So that's the key difference there. And the main reason we want to do that is that in the flexible budget, since it's based on actual units sold, when we compare to the actual results, financial results for the period, right, then volume is no longer a factor because the volume is the same under both of those budgets, right? So that's why the flexible budget is a little bit more helpful in comparing to the actual results because, again, volume is not a factor. So what we need to do is go through each line item, determine whether it's going to be the same for the flexible budget as it was in the static budget. And if not, what do we need to get to the right answer for the flexible budget? So going back to the prompt, it looks like Shelly, the CFO, she provided some additional information. Now we don't know whether it's going to be helpful or not, but it might be, right? And then we also have four exhibits. So it looks like we have several emails, one with the sales budget, one with the production budget, one with the actual units sold for May, and then we also have some operating expense detail, right? So we may need those. We'll reference them as we go through the video. So let's start with revenue. So obviously revenue, the primary driver there is going to be the actual volume or units sold, and then the estimated unit sale price, right? So for the static budget, at this point, all we know is that they budgeted $500,000. Now, let's go to the sales budget email and take a look at what we received. So when you read this, well, there's some helpful information here. Ultimately, what we need is that estimated sales per unit of $10, and then we also need to know that the estimated units to be sold were 50,000 units. So those two pieces of information are going to be helpful. Now, what we need to do to get to the flexible budget is base that sales per unit and multiply it by the actual units in the period. And that's going to be in another email that we received from Raj, the director of finance. And so when we look at that email, well, he told us that the actual units sold in the month of May were 65,000 units. So from looking at those two emails, now we have the information to calculate the revenue for the flexible budget. As you can see in the table, it's just going to be actual units sold at 65,000 multiplied by that estimated revenue per unit of $10. And that gives us revenue for the flexible budget of $650,000.
So moving on, we have cost of goods sold now. Now, this is also going to be driven partially by units sold, right? We have our variable cost, and that's going to be based on volume. Now, there may also be a fixed component of cost of goods sold, so we will have to be on the lookout for that. So cost of goods sold for the static budget, right? That's $200,000. Now, if we go to the email with the production budget, and this was an email from Ralph, the production manager, well, he gives us some estimates that were used in the static budget. So we see direct materials, well, that was $2 per unit. Direct labor was $1 per unit. Variable factory overhead was 60 cents per unit. And then they also had fixed factory overhead of $20,000. So what we'll need to do is take these variable per unit costs, multiply by actual units sold of 65,000, right? Because remember the static budget was based on 50,000. And then that will give us the variable production costs, but we also need to add in the fixed factory overhead of $20,000 to get to our total cost of goods sold. So to calculate cost of goods sold for the flexible budget, again, there are three simple steps. So let's start with step one, where we'll take the per unit variable cost. So again, we have direct material per unit of $2. We add direct labor per unit of $1, and then the variable factory overhead per unit was 60 cents. That means our variable production costs per unit were $3.60. So in step two now, we'll multiply by the actual units sold of 65,000, and that gives us total variable production costs of 234,000. Now step three, hopefully you didn't forget this piece. This is where we have to also add in fixed factory overhead, which according to Ralph was $20,000. So that gives us total cost of goods sold of $254,000, right? So that's what amount we would have under the flexible budget. And again, this is reflective of the actual units sold of 65,000. So we've already navigated through revenue and cost of goods sold. And then the next line is gross profit. Well, this line's easy because all we did was take revenue, subtract cost of goods sold, and that got us the gross profit. So let's do the same thing for the flexible budget. So using the figures in the flexible budget, we had revenue of 650,000, we'll subtract those costs of goods sold of 254,000, and that gives us gross profit of 396,000. So plug that in because that's gonna be the correct answer for gross profit. Now, as we continue down to operating expenses, so operating expenses, they could be driven by volume, but in general, they are usually fixed. Now, there's no emails about this, right? We do have the operating expense detail, but actually the CFO, Shelly, she told us operating expenses are 100% fixed, right? You can see that in the original prompt. So that tells us that operating expenses from the static budget, which were 35,500, we're gonna use the same amount for the flexible budget, right? Very simple. So. For the flexible budget, put in $35,500 for operating expenses. And then the last line here is just net income. And net income, well, that includes all revenue, cost of goods sold, and operating expenses. So we've already calculated all those, so this is gonna be real straightforward. We'll just take gross profit of $396,000, subtract the operating expenses of $35,500, and that gets us down to net income of $360,500, right? So now we have covered all of the required budget line items for the flexible budget. So this was a great simulation on how to go from the static budget to the flexible budget. And just remember the key difference between those two budgets is that the flexible budget is based on actual volumes. Now we'll still use a lot of the assumptions or estimates that were used in the static budget, but again, we're just updating for actual volumes. And that makes it much easier to compare to the actual results because again, volume is not a factor there.